Hi there. I'm Violet Van Hees and this is Grow Your Movement Freedom. Welcome. So today we're going to look at how your body learns. How your nervous system helps you figure out how to do things smoothly and well. And how you can really turbocharge that learning a little bit. How you can work with allowing your nervous system to help your muscles know how to do a movement smoother, easier and better. Our nervous system is built to learn. Our bodies are built to learn from our experience and from movement and from the things we do in life. That's called neuroplasticity. It means that whatever we do helps to shape and adapt our movement. The things that we do subsequently in life. And this can either be for forming great habits and learning new things. It can also mean that we end up learning habits or particular ways of doing things that may get in our way. But it means we're not locked into them. So we have freedom to learn new things at any age all through our life. This is really exciting stuff and it's fun to work with and it allows us to really tap into how we can learn quickly because it's our nervous system that tells our muscles what to do. So if we can influence our nervous system, if we can influence what our brain is telling our muscles to do, we have a quick route in, a much quicker route in to changing how we move or tightness patterns or other things going on than if we just try to work on the muscles. We've got to change the brain in order to change the muscles. So our muscles are pretty interesting. Our muscles are made up, they're kind of like a bungee cord. So here's a bungee cord for us to take a look at. And they're kind of made up like a bungee cord because a bungee cord, I don't know if you can see this really well, but a bungee cord has got lots of little tiny rubber fibers inside it made up these little bundles of fibers that are in there. And all those fibers together make up a bungee cord. And our muscles are kind of like that. Our muscles are made up of individual muscle fibers inside, like each one of those rubber fibers. And each one of those fibers has got a nerve that attaches to it and tells it what to do. And then they're all bundled up together in a long bundle package, usually long, sometimes flat sheets, whatever, whatever shape of the muscle, to create the muscle as a whole. And part of learning something new involves the nervous system figuring out how much, how many of those muscle fibers are needed to do the job at hand. And the nervous system can either excite or ask a muscle fiber to do something, or it can also prevent or inhibit a muscle fiber from doing something. And it's this action, these com com combined actions of asking the muscle fibers that are needed to do something and inhibiting the other ones, keeping them from doing things, that starts to refine our movements. So here's an example. When you brush your teeth, if you brush your teeth with your usual hand, you've got it down to a fine art. It's pretty efficient, it works well, everything's great. If you switch hands, you might find that, first of all, your arm gets tired because you're doing all this sawing movement and there's a lot of muscle involved. And you might find it's fairly messy. You get toothpaste all over the place the first few times you do this. But if you keep at it and do it for a couple of days, you'll find that it starts to smooth out. You'll find that your toothbrush is way less all over the place and that your arm gets way less tired. And probably within two weeks or so, you'd have it down to a fine art on this hand as well. And it's that ability to refine the movement, to get more efficient, to use only what you need to do the job at hand and to have it move in the sequencing that you need that is the real lovely part of how our nervous system learns new movement and can bring quality into new movements for us. So here's your task for this week, your mission, should you choose to take it. There's a movement that is used a lot in the Feldenkrais work, it's called the bell hand. and it's, uh, I, I'm not exactly sure why it's called the bell hand. I'm trying to find out. Hopefully I can tell you next time. But I'm going to show you and teach you the movement this time. And then in the next video, we're going to find out how and why this movement is really useful for helping you in lots of other movements. All right? So for this week, here we go. The bell hand. So the bell hand is made of some bigger movements of opening and closing your fingers. And then it's also made of some very fine movements of bringing your fingers together to touch your thumb 
and it's in part playing with can you organize the big movements and the smaller finer movements so that all your fingers can come together with your thumb at exactly the same moment so all the fingers meet the thumb at the same time my right hand is better at that than my left hand as I'm learning on the left hand this is something you can play with while you're watching TV I play with it while I'm walking down the trail I walk on a trail in the morning quite often so I've been playing with this right you can sort of find out is it what does it take to make this light and easy so instead of gripping fingers just noticing are your hands tense when you do this can you make the hands softer can you find out how to do this with as light a movement and a motion as possible and can you bring them all together? You can do them one finger at a time, several fingers at a time, or all your fingers together at the same time. All right? Go play with that. Explore that movement. And then next time, bring what you've learned with you. And we're going to look at how to apply that into the things, other things you do in life. And what that does and why it does that and how it could make a difference for you in terms of the quality of your movement and the ease of movement for you. Sounds pretty funny. Eh? I'm looking forward to seeing you there. In the meantime, happy exploring. Have a great couple of weeks. See you next time. Thank you. Bye bye.